In the interest of East Lansing community, I'd like to call this uh, May 8th regular meeting of the East Lansing Board of Education um, to order at 7 p.m. Um, you'll notice that President Chambers um, is absent uh, this evening due to some um, scheduling conflicts, and so as my role as Vice President, I will be running this evening's meeting. So with that, um, Ms. Hocord, can we have a roll call, please? So far, so good. <laughs> my notes are working. <gasps> Dr. Lyons. Present. Ms. Ferris Highland. Here. Dr. Edsel. Here. Ms. Comier. Here. Ms. Fink is also absent this evening. Oh, Mr. Martin. Here. Um, Student Representative Benavides. Student Representative Milat. And Ms. Laco. Here. All right, thank you. Um, Trustee Ferris Highland, would you read our mission statement, please? Our mission statement is nurturing each child, educating all students, and building world citizens. Thank you. Um, so we have next on our agenda, the, where am I at here? Uh, approval of agen uh, agenda. Anyone like a motion? I move the Board of Education approves the May 8th regular meeting agenda as presented. Second. <clears throat> all right, so moved by. Trustee Etzel and second by Trustee Martin. Any discussion? All right. Anonymous. <laughs> well, now I got to take the vote. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, you jinxed me. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Um, do I go by one by one, right? Nope. nope. All in favor? <laughs> any opposed? Any abs? Wait, start by saying. Oh. All in favor, say. All in favor. Aye. 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 <laughs> No, any opposed? Any opposed? You guys. Any abstentions? All right. That was unanimous. <laughs> All right, approval of minutes. Um, anyone would like to give? I move the Board of Education approves the April 24th, 2023 regular meeting minutes as presented. Second. All right, that was moved by uh, Trustee Etzel. Um, second by uh, Trustee Ferris Highland. Any discussion? All right, and so now I say, what do I say? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, passed unanimously. Woo, y'all, this is stressful. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing fine. All right, so next step we have uh, recognition um, and I will turn it over to Trustee Ferris Highland. Thank you. I have a few items tonight. Um, number one, Marble teacher Julie Haskell was the recipient of State Rep Representative Penelope Cernoglu's 75th District Teacher of the Month Award. Representative Cernoglu recognized Ms. Haskell for developing and expanding a sight word reading program to assist early learners and for coordinating a science night event for students. Mrs. Haskell and her class enjoyed pizza and a visit with Representative Cernoglu. The second item is, as a district, we are celebrating staff appreciation this month. Many of the school councils have recognized staff with food and other special activities. District administrators will be cooking a hot breakfast for our staff at each building throughout the month of May as well. Number three, Wednesday, May 10th is National and Michigan School Nurse Day, and we are honored to celebrate our very own school nurse, Sarah Smith, and are very grateful for her. And finally, a big thanks to our 2022-2023 Board of Education student representatives, Gabriel Benavides and Alexander Milak, for serving this year. And we have certificates for you and some <laughs> cool East Lansing swag. <laughs> That concludes recognition. All right, perfect. And um, on behalf of myself, I would just like to say thank you as well for um, being here and representing the student body um, and really, you know, um, telling us how it is and, and what you're hearing and, and sharing um, um, with the board. And uh, President uh, Chambers also sent um, some words, and I'll read them for you. She says, Pre um, 
she is disappointed not to be able to be here in person, um, and to, she wants to thank you for your service. Um, and she says, Gabe and um, Xander, I'm so sorry that I cannot be there tonight to thank you both for your service to the board this year. The role you play acting as a mediator between our students and the board is critical. We always knew that, I think, but this year demonstrated the criti criticality of that relationship even more. Thank you for all that you have done to ensure the voices of your classmates has been, um, wait, 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 wait. Thank you for all that you have done to ensure the voices of your classmates um, um, has been heard this year. We appreciate you so much. Um, so that was on behalf of um, um, Trustee Chambers. And is there any additional recognition from the board um, that they would like to give, or the superintendent? I would just say that um, I was fortunate enough to go to the School of Rock show that was done by a community group called All of Us Express Children's Theater. But I would say Probably 80 per funded by Chris Martin. <laughs> yes, but like about 80% of those students uh, who were in the performance of East Lansing students, they did a terrific job. And I know how much work went into it. And um, I was so impressed by our kids. Awesome. All right. All right, so uh, next will be our student representative report. Good evening. Uh, I have another very brief students report tonight. Uh, we have a track meet Friday, uh, and then softball senior night is May 11th from 4 to 6 p.m. Um, in terms of what's going on in the building, has been AP testing all this week and last week, so it's just slow. There's no bells. It's, it's pretty chill. The seniors are ready to get out of there. Um, I think the last day is May 18th, so it's getting exciting. Uh, next week, I believe, we have a lot of just fun stuff to do, uh, graduation, rehearsal. Um, and then I think something that I thought was cool that I noticed was new to this year, I believe it's new to this year, but there were on Friday, May 19th, I believe the seniors are going around to the elementary schools, which I think is great. Uh, it's great to get the uh, elementary kids involved and get them excited for the future. So. Uh, that's all I have, or, and then finals have been going on as well along with AP testing, but that's, that's all I have for my students' report. I'd like to thank the, the whole board for this year. I really appreciate the opportunity to learn from you guys. Um, it just means a lot to me, so thank you very much. I appreciate what, what it. What are your plans? I'll be attending Grand Valley next year. All right, congratulations. I'm studying business, so I'm excited. All right. Awesome. Congrats. Thank you. Uh, I'd also like to say thank you to all of you for this opportunity and my peers for voting me into this position. And my plans are next year, MSU, and I'll be studying computer science. All right. Great. Nice. Congratulations. Good luck. Awesome. All right. Um, any questions from the board members about the student report? All right. So next on the agenda is the superintendent's uh, report. Superintendent Lego, the floor is yours. Thank you. My report is just about as short as student representative report as we wind things down. I want to remind folks that tomorrow is kindergarten roundup. So we will be holding kindergarten roundup at each of our elementary buildings. If folks are unsure which building to attend, just please call your neighborhood elementary building. Um, most kindergarten permeable boundary requests cannot be approved this early. We'll re revisit them in the summer. So for now, families with a pending permeable boundary request should attend their neighborhood school's roundup event. And I also want to share that next week, East Lansing High School will be kicking off their unified sports event. Uh, May 16th, East Lansing High School will be holding its unified sports kickoff event outside on our turf field during fifth and sixth hour classes. Unified Sports is dedicated to promoting social inclusion through shared sports training and competition experiences. Approximately 50 Lynx students have planned an afternoon of accessible activities for the students they support and their peers. Lynx is a peer-to-peer -peer support program that identifies students that need extra assistance due to developmental disorders and pairs them with classmates who help with socialization and independence as they navigate school life. 
Students will enjoy food and activities together as we look to expand our opportunities next school year. Great. Yeah, it's exciting. Any questions from board members for the superintendent? All right. Well, next on our agenda is a presentation by our assistant superintendent, Glenn Mitchum, and um, our director of equity and social justice, Claudia Burton. Um, if uh, Step up and <coughs> show us yours. So, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, I have to talk really fast because uh, in the morning, I'm making waffles All right. for the high school staff, me and Miss Laco. So and others as well. So I've got to get my get home and get my beauty sleep. So uh, you have to be beautiful and make waffles. Well, that was a prerequisite. Yeah, I haven't been to a waffle. I have a high before. standard. <laughs> yeah. That's why I make bad waffles. <laughs> so I'm excited to tell you uh, about our the East Lansing Public Schools professional learning journey of 22-23. Um, it's kind of a good news, bad news good news situation. The, the good news is I have lots of really awesome things to tell you about. Uh, the bad news is I don't have enough time to tell you about all of these things, so I will be talking quickly and kind of shallow uh, uh, in on the different things that I'm telling you about. That's the bad news. But the good news is Ms. Burton is here as of four seconds ago and uh, is uh, going to go a little deeper into one of the professional learning um, experiences that we offered this year. So I'm excited that she'll be able to give you a little bit of a deeper dive. So our goal uh, this year was to offer professional learning that, that had clarity, that was uh, focused, and also gave our teachers choice. And so as you hear this presentation, uh, call me to task on that, see if we uh, were able to, to do that. I'm, I'm hoping we were able to accomplish that. Professional learning this year in East, in East Lansing was so different than it's been in the past. We've had these late start professional learning days in the last few years, which honestly, I don't think our, a lot of our parents loved those days. They were tough for, for childcare. Uh, and it was tough for our teachers to be in this professional learning mode, really get wrapped up into something, and then literally minutes later, kids are in their classroom. Let's go, let's start teaching. And that was a tough transition. So. Um, the first way that they were really different this year is the increased professional learning time. We took advantage of a pupil accounting um, allowance that allowed us to um, count as many as 38 hours of professional learning um, that, that was part of our, that took away from our students' instructional time, which was a tough choice. But as you'll see as I present this, um, we had a lot of really heavy lifts and important things to. Uh, for our teachers to, to work through, so we felt like that was important thing to do. Also, our schedule was completely different this year. We had two professional learning days before the first day of school, plus uh, we scheduled five uh, professional learning Fridays uh, throughout the year, the, the whole day, one October, uh, one in November, planned on one in, in February, but that had to get canceled, March, and then again in April. So those are all day uh, learning Fridays for our staff. Um, and then all of our professional learning were focused on uh, our district goals. So the goals that we focused on, you, some of you on this board were part of this uh, both school board and administrative team, uh, you might call it a retreat. We were just down the hallway in the student uh, union. And we spent a good part of three plus hours of working and talking and vision casting for our district. And we came up with what I thought were some awesome, uh, uh, clear, direct goals for us to engage in uh, for our learning. So to refresh your memory under nurturing each child, uh, that goal was to cultivate a sense of belonging and connection in each child while supporting their social, emotional, and physical well-being some objectives that were a part of that had to do with professional learning were to attend to student and staff mental health and wellness on a consistent basis and also reintegrate staff and students through intentional school connectedness efforts and of course we're talking about reintegrating from the pandemic we called that nurturing each child goal kind of our social emotional learning goal 
educating all students. We said that we wanted to create equitable learning opportunities with high expectations and support in order to eliminate the opportunity gap and foster growth and high achievement for all students. Uh, an objective there was to increase student access and participation for underrepresented populations by providing rigorous programming at all grade levels. So we call this our teaching and learning goal. And then finally, under Building World Citizens, we were, charged, we were charged to target the district's commitment to equity and inclusion by raising awareness, developing acceptance, and building culture of social and racial justice and accessibility for all students in order to create a school community that is culturally responsive. And an objective there was to intentionally provide students and staff with opportunities to explore, reflect, discuss, and learn more about themselves and others of different social identities and traditionally marginalized groups. So the professional learning that I'm about to tell you about now uh, should, if we did it right, were connected uh, to all three of those goals that uh, you just saw there. So we divided our professional learning up into two kind of uh, way, uh, two focuses. We had an elementary focus and a secondary focus. The elementary folks, uh, um, uh, uh, two years ago, um, we found out that their reading uh, program, their English language arts program, was being discontinued. So the board probably remembers uh, approving a new uh, English language arts curriculum for reading and writing, and it is a was a heavy lift. It was completely different than what we chose. Uh, a lot of things have changed over the years. I, our last uh, program was probably approved a dozen years ago or so. And this new program um, had a lot of uh, best practice research behind it. And it's awesome, but it's a lot. It's a lot to learn. So our elementary folks spent a lot of time learning about our new program, Bookworms. Um, they started initially training in the summer of 2022, last summer, and got their heads around just the first module of that program. And then uh, through our amazing instructional coaches, um, they provided professional learning around the second module. Bookworms is broken into uh, three 45-minute blocks that students uh, go through in the classroom. One's a shared reading block. The other is dif the differentiated instruction block, and then finally the English language arts block. They spend a lot of time learning and growing and understanding uh, those blocks. Our elementary folks got to hear from John Strong, uh, Dr. John Strong. He was actually uh, one of the authors of the DI block, and um, he, we brought him in to talk directly to them, along with Dr. Laura Tortorelli from Michigan State. Uh, she worked with our young fives and our K teachers. Um, on, again, on that different differentiated, differentiated instruction block. I just call it the DI block, so I don't say stupid things like I just did. Um, they also spent time in the informational decoding inventory, the IDI. That is the assessment part of Bookworms that allows teachers to progress monitor their students. And just because we hadn't done enough, we also, this year, completely redid our how we looked at data. And we took our elementary staff through a whole new series of data meetings um, and data structure for how to um, interpret, understand, and use data to inform their instructions. So our elementary staff spent time doing that as well. What I just showed you was our classroom, what our classroom teachers were doing. Uh, but of course, that's not everybody. We also have also have special area teachers, elementary paraprofessionals, administrative assistants, social workers, English learn, learner teachers, categorical room teachers, speech and language pathologists, and they uh, didn't need to focus on bookworms as much, so they did a lot of other things. They didn't do all of those things listed there, but some of them did at least one of those things. For example, Smart Zone is a group dedicated to uh, expanding STEAM, um, growth in East Lansing. And so we had representatives from Smart Zone work with our special area teachers about exploring different things they could do in the classroom in collaboration with their group. Um, our special area teachers also uh, dug into outdoor learning and how to incorporate that into their special times. Um, CPI, crisis prevention intervention, is a de-escalation um, training program that uh, many of our uh, special ed teachers engaged. 
uh, social, emotional, and mental health course. I'm going to talk more about that in just a minute, but when I do remember that our uh, elementary paraprofessionals and some of our administrative assistants also participated in that with our secondary teachers. Uh, unique Learning Systems is a core learning program for our categorical teachers. CHAMPS uh, overview training is a classroom management training that our social workers participated in. And then all of those departments had increased department time to collaborate with one another and connect and learn with each other. All of our staff as well at the elementary level uh, learned about a new instructional support meeting process, which is a lot of words to basically say when a teacher has concerns about a student, whether it be academic or behavioral, they, in this new process, have a chance on a monthly basis to bring that student to a group that comprised of their principal, uh, possibly one of the instructional coaches, uh, uh, interventionist teacher, possibly a social worker, and just talk through and get help and support about what to do for this kid. And uh, then on a monthly basis, they can follow up on that, see how, try things, see how it's going, try other things, move, the, move that child on uh, through our process if need be. And then just recently, April 28th, our last uh, professional learning day, our elementary folks went through a, a presentation from secure education consultants uh, all about school safety, critical incident training. So all of that is what our elementary folks did just in the mornings of our professional learning. Uh, every afternoon of those five days, um, they were involved in building work groups. Building work groups is a, um, was kind of bred from the idea of that schools are so guilty of asking our teachers to do critical work on a volunteer basis after school. And you just have those who are, you know, willing and, and able to do it and they'll show up and they'll stay late and work on lots of things. But we thought, could we provide some school time to do some of that critical work that uh, teachers want to do in their own buildings and it's building level work. And so building work groups were um, a chance for staff to choose to be a part of, of uh, different work groups and to, to do staff generated, staff uh, led work in the building. Our elementary uh, buildings um, worked on staff, had three different building work groups. One was staff and student wellness. Another was culturally responsive, positive behavior intervention and supports, PBIS. And then also there was an academic multi-tiered systems of support team. Um, and then all of our staff also, um, we gave them time to work on their required state trainings through safe schools. Uh, these are required trainings that, that were all online modules. They covered things like bullying or FERPA or uh, <clears throat> visual weapons screening, those kind of things, sexual harassment, those kind of things. So that was our elementary group. Secondary professional learning days, we were able to develop uh, four different courses that ran through the mornings uh, for our secondary folks. They're, they were uh, three-hour courses, 8 to 11. Staff got to choose uh, which course they wanted to be a part of. Um, we, they had to rank their choices. Most, most staff got their first choice. I think everybody got at least their second choice. And I'm just going to quickly run through what those four courses were. First one was social emotional learning and wellness course. Uh, there's a lot of words up there, I won't read those to you, but it was a three hour course and the first hour um, focused in on, on staff wellness. And instead of bringing staff in and telling them about how important their wellness is or taking care of themselves or giving them ideas of things they could do to help with their wellness, they actually got to take care of themselves for an hour. So they might have come in and gone for a walk for an hour or they might have come in and got with some of their friends and played pickleball in the gym. Some of them went and did yoga. We brought yoga instructors in. We had others that actually uh, got a, a quick chair massage. Um, some came in this room, I think it was, and played board <coughs> games for an hour. And uh, it was amazing, the impact on that. In fact, when uh, this course concluded on the first day, the folks that picked all the other three courses were like, can I transfer to that course? Because mm -hmm. I want a back rub. Um, so, and I should have said earlier, our, our idea is, if we do this well, is to 
after maybe making some adjustments, offer this similar courses over the next couple of years. So a staff member that didn't take this but wanted to can come back to it. The last two hours of this course were focused on student um, wellness. So they tackled subjects like uh, social emotional learning, trauma, how trauma affects students learning, suicide prevention and intervention, and then other common mental health diagnoses that they will see in the classroom. Another course that we offered was EWIMS, or the Early Warning Intervention and Monitoring System. This is like a secondary MTSS model that uh, took folks through uh, best practice research, seven step process to learn how to um, address students that were are struggling in their schools. So we, have a, we had a middle school group and a high school group that were led through these seven steps uh, by some folks from Ingham ISD. And the process focuses in on three key factors, attendance, behavior, and course performance. And they learned how to run this system into their buildings. So uh, we're excited about what all that can do for us in both our buildings. Another course that we offered has been around for a couple years now, the core course for educators. This is the course that's taught by the Justice Leaders Collaborative. And uh, I won't read all this to you, but I just want to read a couple of things. Uh, core course is, a, is an intensive seminar for individuals and organizations who seek to deepen their understanding of and commitment to equity, inclusion, diversity, and social justice along lines of race, class, gender, sexual orientation, and ability. Participants must be willing to reflect deeply in ways that may challenge previously held assumptions and worldviews. So this course is all about kind of looking in and learning things about yourself that aren't always uh, the best. You're sometimes shocked that, wow, I do have bias or I, I do have, uh, I, I have behaved in ways that um, I'm not proud of. I need to understand that better. Um, so uh, all of our administrative team uh, at the central office level has gone through it as well as all of our school uh, building administrators. And now we're pushing it out to our teachers. Um, so we had uh, quite a few folks take advantage of the core course. And then finally, our fourth course, for those uh, who took the core course, they were able then, kind of a follow-up, to learn more about how to apply the EJAT, which is part of the uh, core course. Um, the EJAT is the Education Justice Assessment Transformation Tool. I just wanted to say that to kind of show off in front of Claudia. Um, that is, uh, part of that is uh, a way to take your curriculum, your what you teach, through the EJAT and learn how to take it for a ride. And I'm not gonna tell you anything more about that because that's what Claudia is gonna come tell you about here in just a minute. Um, but before I bring Claudia up, the that there, all those courses, like I said, were just in the morning. In the afternoon, our secondary folks did uh, building work groups as well. Because the middle school and high school, so much bi they're bigger buildings than the elementary buildings, they um, had lots of more uh, groups that they came up with, uh, building work groups. So those listed there on the screen are the different building work groups that were available for teachers to pick from. And then the secondary group also did safe schools training as well. So I'll bring Ms. Claudia up to tell you a little bit more about taking a ride. Ms. Glenn, greetings everybody. Um, so I am going to talk about one of the courses that secondary was a part of. Um, so as Glenn mentioned, we have the core course for social justice that our um, staff has taken. We actually have staff all throughout the district that have participated um, as far as our teachers, secretaries, paras, we get as many people in the course as possible um, to take it. And so I'm starting with the secondary staff first. Um, I think one of the big questions that has like come out of not only from our staff, but from the community is um, how is this work in taking the core course, meaning um, being looking at your biases, looking at um, some of the practices that you may hold that are very deeply ingrained in us um, and working to mitigate them. And how does that show up in your classroom? Um, and how does that translate? And so the work of the EJAT, which Glenn already broke down the, the, the acronym for us, 
proud of you for that, because um, it is a mouthful, um, is a tool that's open and it's only open to individuals who have actually taken the core course and completed it. So um, at the end of taking the core course or social justice, um, they introduce you to this tool, which assesses many different things and it can be used at a multitude of levels. Um, so it could be used at the classroom level, the building level, or the district level. Um, it's kind of like an assessment auditing tool um, to look at your practices, policies, and procedures. Um, and so there's a lot of different areas um, in which the EJAC covers. Um, at the center, I know it's hard to see, um, but knowledge is biases and beliefs is at the center of all of these different areas because no matter what, we always have to go back to that area um, and be responsive um, to looking at those different placements as we're working to mitigate the other areas. Um, so for this course, we looked at specifically um, teaching and learning because I was working with um, at least all of our classroom teachers who asked to be in this course. So we didn't have any representation from Paris um, or any of our secretarial staff because it impacted the content. Um, and so within using this, we kind of broke it down into two parts um, of doing this course. The first part was looking at a deep dive um, into the teaching and learning section. The EJAT is a very robust um, document. It's a very robust tool to actually use. Um, and it can be really overwhelming if you don't take it piece by piece. And so we just looked at teaching and learning specifically um, for this section. And so in that section specifically, it covers uh, standards and requirements. Content, which is, I'm going to star that in your mind. It's kind of like the big piece that we looked at. Pedagogy, which that word doesn't ring to you is really like how you actually teach and deliver the content within your classroom um, assessments and assignments. So what am I actually putting together um, and then grading and testing. So um, our teachers actually took a great deal um, of time of actually looking through those sections in the EJAT. There's um, a tool that actually allows you to self assess um, or you can assess with others. Um, you can assess and then come back and then we can do a reassessment. Um, it gives you like a zero to three scale to kind of rate yourself. Um, zero is like I don't really see that. Um, a part of my work. I'm not doing it as well as I want to. Three is like, I can give you specific examples of how I'm actually utilizing and doing that. And also in the EJAT, there are examples. So if you don't know that like pedagogically, I'm doing this really well, um, there's an example that you can look to, to kind of put you in the frame of mind of if you're doing something really well within the classroom and maybe what impact it's making. Um, there's also a question marker in a two to assess it that doesn't apply to you. So um, we spent a lot of time on that. Then we moved into, in this section, um, obviously we want that work to translate in the classroom. So as teachers took the time to assess, um, figure out kind of where they were in this teaching and learning section. Um, and I made sure I put an emphasis on looking at content and pedagogy because we were gonna spend a lot of time um, trying to figure out how can we revamp some things that are happening within our classrooms, either specifically for our rooms, cross-curricular, um, or even within our department that we could share, um, that we can make an impact about. And so um, there's a specific thing that a tool that is called a ride. Um, and so it's a lesson, lesson or unit planning template that teachers can use in order to kind of reassess um, and come up with some new material um, for their classrooms. So the first thing that we did is I asked teachers to kind of think about what were you exploring? What do you want to do in your classrooms? Um, or what are some lessons or units that you feel like I've done this for a while, it's not really well. I'm kind of seeing um, the areas where I can use some improvement. Um, maybe some biases are showing up in like the videos that I'm using or the type of content that I'm presenting to students, um, how I'm actually presenting it um, and look at it in, in a lot of different facets. So we had to first make sure that we found the standards. That's the key, we're still teaching and learning no matter what. So we have to make sure that our standards are aligned not only to whatever their curriculum standards are. So NGSS for science, Common Core, whatever we're using. Um, and I did have representation across pretty much every content area um, at the secondary level. So this was middle school and high school staff. Um, I even had a special ed person in my group, which was such a fun challenge to figure out like how we're gonna create content um, either for her department, for her or for her kids or for the staff. Um, and so we looked at their state standards. They kind of filtered through what they wanted to do, pick those. And then in alignment, um, there are some standards for social justice that exist within the EJAT as well. Um, and what those standards ask, ask people to do, particularly our teachers, um, is think about these four kind of areas. So appreciation for self, who am I? Um, how does that show up? How do I empower students in thinking about that and what I'm teaching them? Appreciation for diversity, that's kind of the easy one that we kind of look at is how do we actually know who others are? What are they presenting um, either within our space or what do we not know those windows, mirrors, and doors that we like to mention? Um, understanding of injustice. Um, so how and why is our society unequal? Um, what am I presenting to my students to have them question that um, and think about how they can do better as they go out to be citizens? Um, and then a commitment to just justice. So how can I make the world more just? What can I do? That's kind of like the action piece that we want our kids to, to take away with. And some of them are ready. They're like, 
I'm going to lead the brigade. I'm going to do it. Um, and so that's what we really want out of it. So as we filter through all those things, um, there's a lot of different social justice standards that cross all social identities, so race, class, gender, um, ability, disability, um, looking at all those different areas and kind of focusing and centering on those four different areas. Um, so then we actually utilize the tool, which is a RIDE, another acronym, stick with me. I know education is like acronymed out, <laughs> um, but so a RIDE stands for aligned, relevant, interesting, diverse, and empowering. So in each one of those things, we literally have our staff. I have my standards. I have my topic. Um, I have the content that I want to teach. Um, so how do I actually make sure that this is just in what I'm presenting to my students. Um, and so the first thing is make sure it's aligned. We did that, right? With objectives, activities, and assessments, big view here, right? So we kind of take this large view of planning of like, what do I want students to get out of it at the end? How am I gonna assess them? It doesn't always mean a test, it may mean a project, um, it may mean like some kind of action call that students do, um, but thinking about what are those activities and things along the way. Um, relevancy, I think that's one of the things that like was super hard for the group to figure out is like, this sounds really important to me. And like, as a teacher, I have to find like relevant examples. I know as a science person, that was always the thing of like, social justice, justice concepts are super out there, um, but how do you tie it in with some of those standards and make sure that you know it aligns in the way that you want it to. And it's gonna be there for the kids. They wanna care about it. Um, and the interesting pedagogical approach. How am I teaching it? Are you thinking outside of the box? Are you making sure that you're not just doing PowerPoints and videos and slideshows? What other ways are we doing it? Some teachers are thinking about doing debates, doing things cross-curricular, um, planning projects and different ways that they haven't before. So how are you creating this interesting pedagogical approach to make sure that we're actually engaging students enough that they feel empowered to kind of go and do something with the content that they're learning? Um, diversity. Pick what social identities, um, maybe they're all of them that you're kind of focusing on in the lesson, um, and then making sure that it is empowering for our students. So it kind of leads them into this development and action um, that we want them to have as they move forward in the future. Um, so the last kind of piece, I think, as Glenn mentioned too, kind of with the idea with the building work groups was kind of the plan for me as well, that they needed time to actually figure out and kind of craft some lessons and some units that they're going to be using in the future. Um, some of our teachers are going to be using them as soon as they start in the fall. Some of them will take a little bit longer. Um, some will actually be introduced to staff, just depending on what some of the projects or um, content that they actually created um, look like. So like I mentioned, we have representation from almost every content area. Um, it was really interesting to kind of see some of the collaboration happen across these different subject areas as well. Um, so they had time to work, research, um, spend time and build and collaborate with their colleagues. We had about 14 people um, in our time together and then myself included. So I lended my help and my resources as well. Um, and so at the completion of the course, one of the things that teacher me was like, all right, I need people to report out and I need a way to, to kind of keep assessing. So uh, we have a consistent check-in basis that we'll have about how people are progressing along and then how I can help them um, in building their curriculum if I don't have the resource to do it, who can? Um, and so they were able to report out where they were in their progress of creating their classroom materials. Um, so I just picked three examples of some things that kind of happened throughout our time. Um, so one of our special education teachers at the middle school, um, she actually kind of did like a twofold. Um, and so the areas that she looked at was her, her student advocacy piece um, and them building self-advocacy within the classroom and what would that look like um, was kind of like her content standard piece that she looked at. Um, and then to apply the social justice concept, she looked at that was an area covering um, covering ableism and ability. So we figured out that we were gonna create a document um, that's gonna roll out to staff about how do they understand IEPs, completely breaking it down for them and as a tool that they can use for themselves. Um, and then we're also creating some self-help advocacy skill cards for our kids to kind of, especially at the middle school level that like, maybe they don't even know sitting starters to kind of go up to a teacher and advocate for themselves that they need this tool or they need this thing. Um, and that could be really hard when you're like, I'm just asking that I make sure, you know, I need extra time. So um, those are some things that are gonna really help our kids. Um, we have some, a science and an English teacher who are actually working cross-curricular in their lessons um, based on a novel um, called Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, um, really empowering story. Um, and so we have the science teacher who's looking at the engineering design aspect about it, um, engaging in that way. And then the English teacher is gonna look at the author narration, character development, and then word choice. Um, and so their areas are looking at race and class and and their social identities. And then we have a visual arts teacher who is looking at race and gender in a self-portrait uh, photography project that he's revamping. So that's gonna be really cool as well. Um, 
But the one thing I do want to say is that throughout this process, and they kind of reiterate it, is that the creation of this content is not just for their students um, or just for them. Um, this is going to be shared with their colleagues, whether in our district or outside of our district, um, to continue their learning, continue building on their resources. And obviously, our kids are going to get it firsthand, and hopefully they spread it with the masses, and it, and it goes beyond what they learned in the classroom, and they feel empowered enough to kind of share what they know um, and really building those world citizens that we want. So that was taking a ride, part one, and we'll continue next year. So back to Glenn. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Claudia. Appreciate that. That's awesome. So in closing, we uh, asked staff for feedback, um, and I think our survey closed last week, Thursday, so we're in the, kind of still in the middle of looking at it. And they've, I've already uh, seen some really good uh, constructive things to uh, make this program even better. Uh, it is this was something that was negotiated uh, into our contract, so we'll have a similar time and sequence over the next two years. Um, but uh, we also had some wonderful, what I like to call warm, fuzzy comments, and I'm just going to let you uh, read those for a minute, see what questions you have after that. I have to read this one out loud. The one hour personal self care time with provided activities. This has been one of the most impactful things I've ever experienced in PD in a PD, PD session. Teachers are always told to take care of themselves, but to actually have time given to me by my place of work has been so meaningful my, for my mental health. So love that. So clarity, focus, and choice. What questions or comments or wonderings do you have? We'd be glad to entertain your. So I have uh, just one. Is it my understanding that next year we would do something very similar, but people would be asked to choose a different option. That's the hope, yep. We, uh, we want to do that. Uh, we're still weighing out what kind of uh, uh, weight we need to give to bookworms again next year, because our elementary staff are like, hey, I want to have, I want to play pickleball, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. They're hearing about these courses. Um, the core course we did, uh, Claudia was able to, uh, offer that this year for our elementary staff. We did have some take advantage of that, on, um, but we'd like to have it part of their, their professional learning day, so that is the plan. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, just a comment. Um, I, it was a big change last year when we decided to, to sort of move away from those late start days and to embrace these the the five professional learning days um or it's actually seven isn't that because there's two at the beginning of the right. year yeah um but it's encouraging to me to hear that there's been such positive feedback mm -hmm. uh are there have you heard anybody saying they want the late start days back or is it mostly no uh we've heard just the opposite so glad that we're not having to try to you know switch gears and go from learning our own learning to teaching. Um, so those those days have been very much appreciated. We tried to make that so it was a win-win, not only for teachers, having it on Friday, it's the end of the week, they can kind of you know, let go of their classroom right now and focus in on, on learning, but also for families making it a longer weekend and giving them the, that Friday off. I'm glad to hear it's going so well. Awesome. All right, thank, thank you for your so time, much. appreciate it, you bet. All right, what's next on my agenda? I'm running the show, aren't I? Okay. Public comment. All right, public comment. All right, so um, next is our public comment. Um, I do have a statement that I'll read, but first, just a reminder, if you would uh, like to give public comment, there are blue sheets in the back, and you can um, hand them uh, into Mrs. McCord. 
And all right, so this is the opportunity to address the board. Speakers are to confine their remarks to five minutes. If a, if a speaker requires more than five minutes after all other persons who have requested to speak during this part of the meeting have spoken, that speaker will be allowed additional time. The superintendent or other district staff may comment to clear up or avoid significant misunderstandings. All right, so um, our first uh, public comment is from uh, Veronica Wright on Be Smart presentation at Marvel. Hi. Do I have to say my name or anything or not? Okay. Um, I just wanted to do a brief update on the efforts we've been doing at Marble. Um, so it's been primarily um, led by Tamara L. Curry, who couldn't be here, um, and then myself and Scott Boehm. So we're all Marble parents, and she's been working to get a presentation held at um, the school on the Be Smart um, organization for the safe gun storage. Um, we weren't able to do it this year, but um, the efforts we were able to do were to get flyers um, or cards or something to be handed out tomorrow at the kindergarten info night. Um, so that should be there. And then um, we locked down a date for the presentation in um, the fall. So it's going to be held on Wednesday, August 30th. Um, I think we, I don't have the time in here. I think it was 7 to, to 8 is what we have. But we'll work on a flyer and get that print out. So we just wanted to um, make that announcement so that people are aware of the flyers coming out tomorrow for the kindergarten night and the presentation in the fall. I'm hoping to do it like right when school starts, but before the Labor Day weekend. So that is all that I have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next we have uh, Sheree Brooks on uh, school safety policy. Good evening, everyone. I am Sheree Brooks, and I am a member of the East Lansing Parent Advocacy Team, um, also known as LPAT. I want to thank you all for doing that presentation. So that takes like half of what I need to ask off. So I was like, check, check, <laughs> check. Um, because one of the things that we wanted that collectively as a community, um, we have been asking, when will the administration present the rebrand of the Trojan True. So we see, I've, I've, we've been seeing the language come through, but we haven't actually gotten that, the full um, robust reintroduction of it. So knowing that you all have been working on it behind the scenes, and then also having an opportunity to see the, what those trainings were and how they've how they've come together was um, really important. So thank you for that. We are still asking, though, for um, for the administration to present that rebrand so that so that we can all get into agreement with with it, with it. Ultimately, what we want to do is we want to work collaborative, collaborative, collaboratively with you all in both practice and principle. So both as family members and as team members and community members, we want to if if this is the language that you're using in the classrooms, in the district, in the buildings. We want to be able to use that same language um, at home so that there's, there's continuity. Um, um, one of the things that we agreed that we, that we liked and that we could actually support was the statement that represented, um, the statement presented that reflected when the school environment is positive and predictable, students feel safe have better academic performance and make better choices. We would like to add to that that staff, along with community members, also feel safe. One of the things that we are working to get, a, um, working to level set is what is safe? Because, it's, because we want to ensure that when we're speaking about safety, that, that it is something that we can all get into agreement with, that, that your safe doesn't cause my safe harm or intimidation. And we want to make sure that we're able to meet the mission. You know, you guys say that you want to nurture every child. We also want to make sure that we're helping with contributing to that environment to not only promote that better academic performance, but to add value through social and emotional wellness. So we just want to be a part of your culture of care. And we would like to ask again that you guys just show us or present um, 
what PBS PBIS looks like in the in the buildings when you do that robust rollout. Um, and we know that the equity audit is coming. Um, we just we still haven't heard a date for that. Um, I'm thankful for the presentation of the professional learning because we have on here like what 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 was that calendar? What did you all do all year? So um, thank you for that. I did hear some things that um, could go onto that dashboard. I know we've been trying to figure out collectively what accountability looks like. So I, I was glad, um, Trustee Etzel, that you asked in terms of series, like is this a one and done or is this gonna be over some years? Because you guys took, took this opportunity to put together something so robust. I don't necessarily think that it should be an ask. I think that it is a requirement that over three years, you've either taken one this year, something else the next year, and then the third one the last year, so that you you are then, or the, the district, the, the people who have an opportunity to engage, get that holistic training. Um, as opposed to just picking and choosing bits and pieces of it, because what you'll find is that your choices are kind of, you're going to pick what you're comfortable with. So stretch, stretch yourself and it shouldn't, it shouldn't necessarily be optional. We can, we can then say, we know that you have been taught this so we can hold you accountable. Um, so I, I would like to say on behalf of LPAT that we would like that as well. Um, because it looks good. I was, 100% impressed and I had on my educator hat. Um, the um, board committee descriptions, we haven't seen them yet. So we, um, we asked for the board committees to tell us what the, what the committees actually do, the, the actual description, we have not seen those. Um, we're, trying, we're trying to figure out how to best partner and pair our gifts and talents with, the, with those committees. There are a lot of parents who are trying to figure out what they can do um, and how we can get information back into a centralized space, but we wanna make sure that we're being, making the best use of our time. So will you please provide us, um, provide the, those board uh, committee descriptions. You guys did a better job of posting the times and the committee meetings, but we just don't know what, what those descriptions are yet. Um, so we're just looking for those. Um, we would also like to ask that for, if and when you could, if you could provide a virtual link, that will help us figure out who can attend. Because sometimes this happens during the day when people are at work. So we're trying to figure out, I can take off at this time. Can you take off at that time? Some, most of the time, you know, certain people can be present. But if we can tag someone in to um, log in and attend virtually, then we'll have better representation across uh, those meetings as well. Um, lastly, we have restoration and reparation. Um, I want to thank the administration for working to provide a sustainable solution to maintaining community with the students who are matriculating through Graduation Alliance. Um, we would like to publicly share that Graduation Alliance students will be recognized during the convocation ceremony on May 19th, 2023. Students will be acknowledged by way of cord, they will have, um, it will be a gold and orange combination, and that has been um, decided by administration to symbolize the resilience and excellence that was demonstrated while they each conquered their individual circumstance, circumstances. Additionally, it was raised that students who are matriculating through Graduation Alliance have to, this is an and, so thank you for that piece, and. Um, we learned that students matriculating through Graduation Alliance have to have at least four credit hours per qualifying semester in order to be eligible for sports, according to MHSAA. That is something that I did not know as a parent and none of the other parents knew. So there's, there's still some work that needs to be done with the written procedure for both offering and accepting enrollment into Graduation Alliance. Um, and we're just asking that you all be aware of the, those gaps and that overlap. Um, a standardized procedural document that's transferable doesn't necessarily and doesn't necessarily depend on the historical knowledge of those in place at the time of enrollment will close those gaps of confusion. Um, and it outlines a plan for matriculation that includes reentry. Because sometimes, well, in, in my case specifically, you know, my child, their reentry wasn't given. So if we close that gap, we'll be able to make sure that everybody comes through here a little happier. 
thank you guys for your thank time. Thank you. Thank you very You're much. Welcome. Okay, um, my last blue uh, paper, Del Chenault on transparency. If there's anyone else that would like to give public comment, the blue forms are back there. Good morning, or good afternoon, good evening. I guess I covered them all there. <laughs> uh, Del Chenault, uh, 1026 North Lawn. Uh, thank you for your comments, Ms. Brooks. I agree with you wholeheartedly about some of the bits of progress that need to be made and some of the changes to help all the students in this district. Um, one of the things that I've harped on many times in my comments is around safety and transparency of the board, safety and transparency, um, I'm sorry, in our school district from the board, um, and the lack of progress that we've seen um, in truly getting to a, putting systems in place that, that really make all of our students feel safe and our faculty. Uh, it's come to my attention uh, this week, or the last couple of weeks actually, uh, that some of the things that we put in place haven't really gone far enough and seem to be just kind of papering over some of the severe issues we have. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I know many parents, you know, thousands had signed the online petitions asking for true safety measures, whether it's an SRO, whether at a minimum a panic button uh, in, the, in the district office or the, the high school office that would have a, uh, uh, some connectivity to the outside, you know, particularly to the police department. And I was told uh, last week that that panic button, if you want to call it that, that's been put in is really meaningless. It uh, simply sends an email to the administration. And we're hopeful at some point when something bad happens that somebody sitting in front of a computer opens up an email and does something. But for some reason, we've stopped short of actually having the panic button call law enforcement and the people that respond in emergencies. Why that is, I don't know. I'd like some transparency in that decision making of why does this district refuse, this board refuse to have any connectivity with law enforcement, even at times when it's needed. We've had the discussion around SROs. A lot of good points are raised on both sides. But at a minimum, during times of emergency, to have the button be pushed by staff to say, Hey, now we really need you guys. And we can't even get to that point? Shameful. Um, secondly, I, I learned this week that we've had more incidences of violence against faculty, violence against teachers. We had a teacher suffer a concussion, hit in the head. And the student uh, was, as I'm told, was given a two-day suspension. And it got me to thinking, how often does this, is this happening in our schools? How often are teachers and faculty and staff, parapros and others being assaulted in our schools or being physically hurt or physically threatened? I called for it before, but now I really call for the board to take action to bring transparency around how often this happens. We're doing it with the Police Oversight Commission. We demand that the police department produce a report for use of force every month that says, how often are you putting your hands on people or using force to control somebody? Well, I think it's a good idea to do it in our schools as well. We have students that are violently acting out against teachers. We should know when that happens, how often it's happening, so that we as parents and folks who are involved in the district know how bad it is or how bad it isn't. Maybe it's not as often as we think. Stop the rumor mill. Be transparent. Let's get the data out there. Speaking of data, I then began to do some research about how exactly is the district doing academically, which is really our core mission here, right? Our core mission is to educate children of all shapes, sizes, and colors. The Michigan School Proficiency Index, the Michigan School Index, proficiency is only one of the scores, gives us a pretty good window into how we're doing. Uh, the legislature last week eliminated the, ADA, the A2F transparency scoring methodology. It was a little clunky, I understand why. But the school index is something that is not only part of what's required under the Fed, under the US Department of Education, but is also required um, by the Michigan Department of Education. And uh, there's a proficiency or in its school index that has, I believe, eight different measures, graduation rates, proficiency for students' performance, and the, the educators here know what I'm talking about. And I know you, you and the board do as well, but those in the audience, I want to provide a little bit, enlighten you a little bit more uh, detail on that. Just to give an idea, going back to, I think the first year I found, 2016, 2017, 
the district's proficiency index was uh, 88, I'm sorry, yeah, 88.19%. 2122, 78.08, falling precipitously. The proficiency index, which indicates how are students doing in ELA and math, in 16 and 17, we were scoring at 92.82, pretty good. 76.48 and 100% uh, for African American students. One more second. 21 22, our ELA score 77.85. 64% in ELA, 48.5 in math but for African-American students. They are falling behind and we're not doing much that I'm seeing. I would like some transparency from the board to indicate how we're gonna get our hands around this as black and Hispanic students and people of color in this district continue to fall behind. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks for indulging me, let me go. Okay, I have no more uh, blue sheets, um, so I will uh, close public comment. And uh, next on uh, the agenda is board discussion. I believe there are a few items. Um, Kath, did you have some items that you wanted to bring up? I did. Committee descriptions. We discussed those in January or so, and I actually wrote them at that, wrote a couple at that time as the chair of both finance and policy. I'm not sure how we would proceed at this point in time. Um, finance, I wrote the role of the finance committee of the ELPS Board of Education is to collaborate with the director of finance to provide financial oversight for the district. This includes having direct and ongoing involvement in reviewing and monitoring the district's annual budgeting process and final budget. My thought on that one was to take it to finance committee this week or next week, the 17th, and just run it by um, Mr. Pugh. And then we could get that one up on the website uh, by Mr. Pugh and the other finance committee members if they show up. Um, and then policy committee, I wrote the role of the ELPS Board of Education Policy is to review current. Uh, and create new policies to assure our district's policies are in compliance with the law and appropriate in the district's mission, social, and educational needs. Board policies are used to create guidelines for internal procedures of the district. Now, um, some of that, you know, I, I just looked at what other districts had posted online. I looked at our past postings, and having sat on those two committees for some period of time, felt pretty comfortable writing those. I think we discussed in February the chairs um, doing that. And so, um, but then uh, just kind of wanted to open the discussion up of then, then what? You know, are we just going to allow the, whatever the chair writes to be posted? Do we want to vote on them? Do uh, we want to run them through the administrator that works with those committees? Uh, how would we move forward with that? And that's all. I just wanted to bring it forward so we could. So I think for academic, academic and tech, um, I'll start working on that one. It, it's on my, on my list to do. Um, and what I was planning on doing is sending it to academic and tech, having us all look it over, making edits and changes. And then if we, I didn't know if the next step was bringing it to the board and everyone, like we review them and vote on them, or if, if that committee is good with it, then we're able to post it. So I guess that's what we can discuss then. Because I know that uh, Tally has worked on her on um, facilities, facilities, <laughs> and we l reviewed it um, this week as well. So um, and Tara sent along personnel. Yeah. Um, so, so they are being worked on. I think now we just need to figure out how do we, what's the process? Do we have to, as a board, approve them, or committee can approve them and then we post them? And where would they be posted? I would, I would think that. Um, that it makes sense. I don't think that these descriptions are controversial, but I do think it makes sense for the whole board to just approve them because we'll all be served. Well, there's a chance that we could be on different committees next year. And it makes sense for there to be some continuity from year to year and not drastically change the charge of the committees. Obviously, the chairs have discretion for what's on the agenda, but we don't want to go so far afield that we're not focusing on the core mission. 
of the committees. Um, and so my thought would be to just to go through the process at the committee level to draft the description and do a vote. I don't suspect it would be a controversial vote. Well, I like the idea of circulating it with our committees first and then getting feedback from like for facilities mm -hmm. from Billy, from the director that we work closely yeah. with, and then bringing it to the board, mm -hmm. the full board. Yeah. So making mm -hmm. sure we have it all in order with our committees and then, but yeah, a vote I think is the best way. So um, I guess if we did that for intergovernmental, would that be you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> but you can agree on it in committee. Okay. Um, so should we set the our June meeting as the meeting that we would vote on it? That gives us all a month to run it through our committees, mm -hmm. to write them up, run it through the committees, and then get it back to tear to back to the June agenda. Yep. And I, and we have the um, we have the committee landing page on the district's website. I don't know if that'll be on the 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 re configured website, but that's a natural place to put those descriptions. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. There you go, check that one off your list. I think it should go to in the first June board meeting as items of info so that everybody that way has two weeks to review it and it's also available for any other input and then to come back for a vote on the second meeting. All right. Okay. I was thinking there's two in June, but one in July? Correct. Okay. Yeah. That might have been where I messed up. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like a plan. That's all I had on. Okay, right. and was there any any other um, board discussion? <clears throat> I didn't have anything else, but I wanted to just make sure. Okay. I, I do, well, never mind. I, I want to think on it some more, so maybe next time. Okay. All right, so uh, next on the agenda are action items. So are we moving forward with that first one? We're going to bring it forward. Okay, now. all right. So next on the agenda items, are, um, we have... Uh, one, two, three, four, four. Um, so uh, we have any motions to put forward? I move that the Board of Education, I'm sorry, I move that the Board of Education adopts the social media litigation resolution joining the lawsuit represented by Franz Law Group, APLC, a California professional law corporation. Second. So, when I got here this evening, we've all had a chance to look at that um, litigation and the resolution, and it was originally brought forth with today as the drop dead date on signing such a resolution. It Between it going into items of information and today, that drop dead date has been moved to December. And Troon will be doing a presentation to the superintendents uh, in the county sometime in the near future. So we have several options here. One is we could move forward as is uh, uh, and vote on this. Um, we could table this motion until the superintendents have heard from Troon and or until we have seven people back here at this table um, is another option. Uh, I'm just putting out the options. I'm fine either way. Uh, I'm not sure that my um, I, I don't, didn't really have any questions having read that that would lead me to change my vote one way or the other. I, I do support this litigation and, and the motion as uh, and the resolution as written. When is the presentation? Is it scheduled? We yet? haven't heard yet. Okay. We just found out. Well, because the, the 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 initial was to take action tonight because May 11th was our deadline. Then they just recently moved it to December. So that's why. I, but some districts had already taken action on it to join, so it's um, it's acceptable to do that or to wait if you feel like, I don't know what more information we'll get or when that will be. Um, I just know that Troon's coming to an upcoming superintendent's meeting. And will we have access to that presentation? Or um, I mean, will, I would just report it? back, yeah. likely, because I don't know what, it'll, what kind of form sure. it'll even be in, whether it's a presentation or just a Q&A. I, I don't have those details. Okay. Um, I just know that Troon was invited to come to a meeting. <clears throat> so we have a motion by... So we'd either need a motion to yep. table it. Yep. Or then you would call a vote on the motion as okay. it stands. Yep. Well, I, <clears throat> I, I believe I'll be inclined to support this as well, but I... I don't see the harm in waiting for a report from our superintendent about 
what other districts are doing and um, and what our attorneys are advising. So I would move to table this to a future date after the uh, presentation by Truon Law Firm. Second. Okay, so we have a move to um, table it until December, and it was second. Um, so we will move this uh, to. No, you have to take a vote. We got to move. Then. Yeah, I know. Okay, I, sorry. I was going there. I looked at my notes and said, no, you have to take a vote. <laughs> All right, so. Sorry. If what I was going to oh, say, no. Kath, was if this is approved, it will then be tabled for December. So we will do the be, vote. It can now. be way before that. That's our new deadline. But we may act on it in July or August still. So well, 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 we'll get your notes, your right. report. We'll, get, we'll table it till we hear yeah, more. Till your, yes. till we hear your perfect. Yes. Yep. All right, y'all. Okay. Perfect. So let's do our vote then. And so, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? No. Oh. Any abstentions? All right. So unanimous. All right. So we will wait until we get further information from uh, Superintendent Lego. And then we'll put it back on sometime, maybe in the summer, or maybe even in um, in December. Who knows? <laughs> okay. Um, so um, action item B, um, do I have a motion? I move the Board of Education adopt the resolution in support of the proposed 2023-24 Ingham Intermediate School District General Fund budget as presented. Second. All right, moved by uh, Trustee Martin, second by Trustee Etzel. Any discussion? So uh, you may remember I mentioned this at our last board meeting. Uh, this is a, a, the general fund budget for the, the county, uh, the Ingham, Edi uh, Ingham Edi Intermediate School District. It's catching. Um, uh, general fund, which is a smaller uh, budget. Um, uh, we don't vote on the special education budget for the... School, the intermediate school district. Um, we discussed this briefly in finance and it is supported by our finance director, uh, Mr. Pugh. Um, you all received a copy of that and notification that we'd be voting on it in the last several weeks or so. And that all makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, any other discussion, anything? All right, so we'll move for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Passed unanimously. Um, action item C, purchase of technology hardware. I get a motion. I move the Board of Education approve the purchase of 190 Chromebook, Chromebooks from C High in the amount of $47,420.20. And Second. All right. That was, um, I always get it. What is it? Highland Ferris? Ferris. Ferris yeah. Highland. See, I always, I, she passed that on to me. Know. <laughs> you know, I finally realized second, it's alphabetical but, order. Oh, now I will remember it. <laughs> Seconded by Cormier. Any discussion? All right, we'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <laughs> Pass unanimously. All right. Um, food service management company bid. I get a motion. I move the Board of Education awards the food service bid to Chartwheels for fis fiscal year 2023-24. Second. <clears throat> Was that you or? Okay. Me and her. Okay. Any discussion? Um, again, this was one that uh, came to Finance Committee. Uh, shared a little bit of information that we did have to get the Department of Education to approve the contract because it was a new contract and not just a renewal of a past contract. Um, there was two bids and Chartwells was the overall highest point uh, recipient in the bidding process. Um, and so we awarded them the contract. All righty. Um, all right, we'll take a vote. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Passed unanimously. All right. Um, now on to committee reports. Um, academic Tech, that's me. We had a meeting on May 2nd. Um, at this meeting, we um, 
recognized our student represent representatives with a lunch and a small little certificate and uh, a mug that we gave them. Um, we also had updates from um, the instructional coaches for bookworms um, and uh, all the notes um, are, are on our website now. Um, sorry, it took me a little bit longer to get up, um, but it is up there now. Um, and we also had, what else did we do? Working at my notes. Um, and Glenn went over the um, elementary MT MTSS implementation um, and gave a little bit of an update um, on that. And all of the notes are on there as well. Um, I will announce that we will not have a meeting in June or July, but we will get our um, definition or statement of what our committee committee description out. Um, we'll work through that through email and we'll convene in August. All right. Uh, facilities and facilities committee. Our next meeting is May 19th at 12:30. We haven't met since the last board meeting, so. At 12:30. 12:30. 30, yep. Uh, finance committee. May 17th at 12 12:30. Is the next time that we meet. Uh, intergovernmental. Governmental, that's Monica, she's not here. We have not met, so we have no updates. Um, personnel, that's Tara, and um, she's not here, but there's no report, she says, and uh, just a reminder that some board members have MASB uh, training on Tuesday related to superintendent evaluation, and policy committee, and Kath. Policy committee meets uh, on the 17th at 10 o'clock, and can, um, to go back to personnel committee, can you just share where we are on the on the high school principal search? Um, if you're if you're prepared, if not, I can, I can share that. that uh, the beginning of interview first round interviews are happening tomorrow. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And just to tack on to personnel, our next meeting is May 30th at 2 p.m. Oh, thank you. Yes, that was not in the notes. May 30th. At what time? Two. Two p.m. All right. Um, announcements. Do any board members have any announcements this evening? I'd like to say something. Um, this is a throwback to something I said f four years ago. Um, but a couple of the folks who spoke tonight mentioned Teacher Appreciation Week and Teacher Appreciation Day. And I think it's such an important time because I think that our teachers do incredible work. Um, the story I told a few years ago was about my first year as a teacher. And every year as a teacher can be challenging, but your first year as a teacher is the most challenging. And there were plenty of days where I went home really discouraged and upset, but I was fortunate to have wonderful colleagues and students who I loved working with and a community that I really enjoyed working in and every Friday just about every Friday after the students went home for the day I would get together with several of my colleagues at a local establishment called the Lenox Lounge this is on 124th Street in Lenox in New York City and um, the woman I, I taught with Felicia Soifer would when everybody had a drink, she would offer a toast. And it was always the same. She said, to the hardest working people I know. And I still feel that way. I've, you know, for the last 12 years I've been a lawyer, the hardest job I ever had was being a teacher. And it's hard, hardest now, in May, when everybody can see the light at the end of the tunnel, and these days get real long. And I'm glad that we're doing all these great things for our teachers and showing our appreciation for them because they need it now. And I just want to say one more thank you to the hardest working people in our community in East Lansing Public Schools. Thank you, Chris. Here, here. Thank you. Any other announcements? All right, then we will stand adjourned at 8.19 p.m. Woo, I made it. Good job, Liz. I'll be there.